the time for the fight of your life. The time to focus on all of your memories and time. If you want to know, then surely die. Time for you to turn the end of the line. Waves of darkness try to shut on your eyes. They overwhelm you with the hand of nothing but lies. Heed these words as your journey begins. The courage in your heart that will be the key for you to win. Hello and welcome back to Kingdom Review Zero EXP. I'm your host, Future Key Bearer. Out of all the games in the series, Birth by Sleep is actually the one I had most confidence in for this challenge. And that mainly came down to one thing, the command melding system. With a little bit of patience, and a game guide on my lap, I would be able to get some of the best commands and abilities fairly early on, including... Second Chance and Once More! Seriously, you have no idea how much of a godsend these abilities are until you have to do a challenge like this without them. But unfortunately, I couldn't get them too early. In each character story, I had to go through the first three Disney worlds pretty normally, just with a higher difficulty. Once you complete these three, though, you can buy some pretty ideal commands, including Cure, Thunder, and Zero Gravity. I'm gonna leave you to find the recipes for the commands and abilities on your own, but I will say this. For abilities, you of course want Second Chance and Once More, but you're also going to want Leaf Bracer, and all five counts of Attack Haste and Magic Haste. As for commands, always recommend Kiraga, and the one-two punch of Thundaga and either Zero Gravija or Magnesia. Seriously, those commands working together will make surprisingly quick work of basic enemies. I also recommend getting Renewal Block for Terra and Ven, and Renewal Barrier for Aqua. Heals you as you block attacks. Honestly, because of this, pretty much the entire game was the old song and dance of some bosses took a few tries, but no standouts. The only thing that got a bit iffy was the final bosses. I was mainly doing chip damage to them, so they took a while, but the normal strategy still worked just fine. Though I did later find out about a strategy to quicken up... most of them. And it all comes down to our old friend, Peter Pan. Yes, once again, Peter helps us break the game. In the boss fights, what you gotta do is activate his D-Link and fill the command bar, best done by landing aerial attacks. Because flying child. Then activate the sword bill finisher, mash the attack button as much as you can, and it's gone! There was no editing the speed of that clip. Granted, for each one, it can be kinda of tricky to find the right timing for when to hit the finisher, otherwise the boss will teleport away, but it makes insanely short work of them. This strategy is so ludicrously effective that the speedrun world record for this game is done doing a zero EXP run. The only downside is that you can't use it on Ben Benitas and Aqua Story, because Mickey is there and the game doesn't allow D-Links while you have party members, and Terra Norton and Terra Story because... Honestly, I have no clue. Ben's good to go, though. Following that, despite my usual reluctance to do secret bosses, I did feel the need to do the secret episode because it felt like a very important part of the plot. The Magnet Thunder combo made short work of all the basic Heartless, but then I got to... This thing. This roided out Darkthorn actually came close to making me completely throw in the towel. I was barely doing any damage to it and would just by the skin of my teeth only make it about as far as phase two. So I caved and looked for a solution online and what I found shocked me. And it all came down to a little spell called Ignite. It is insane how much damage that this is doing, all for essentially locking onto this thing. The entire fight came down to dodge rolling like mad, recasting Ignite, and healing whenever necessary. I'm gonna be honest, this kinda pissed me off how easy it was, mainly because I never would've thought to do this. Now, that's not to say that I'm mad that I didn't know how to break the game, like, I never would've come up with half of KH2's game-breaking strategies myself either, but this? My problem is that the late game bosses like this are typically immune to status effects like burning, so I would've figured something like Ignite would've been a pointless effort. But regardless, I did it. And after feeling emboldened by taking on KH2's secret bosses, I decided to take on these ones as well. But just as Aqua. Why? One, best girl. Two, because for the most part, any strategy I could come up with would be applicable across all three characters. So I figured if I can beat them with one, I can beat them with all of them. And quite frankly, beating every boss three times sounded pointless. Starting with the basic ones, God, calling these freaks basic. We've got Vanitas' Lingering Sentiment. I personally like to deal with this Shadow Clone thing by unleashing a maxed out shot lock. Not because of any damage, but more for the iframes. From there, drop mind spells when you can and let Vanitas run into them. 
Also, do not go in with any cure spells. If you cast one, Vinius will copy the effect, undoing any progress. Instead, go in with standard potions. With the standard ones, you can have up to 5 per command slot, and you really don't need to be able to heal more than that. In this fight, you can either take a hit, or you can't. Also, if you fail, use the continue option, not retry. Any potions you used in the previous attempt will still be gone if you retry. I don't know, weird quirk of the game's design. Next up is Mysterious Figure. Honestly, I just went straight online for help, as this guy is notoriously difficult, and in my opinion, a bit luck-based. And the answer I found shocked me, but in a good way this time. We're using D-Links again, but this time it's Goofy. When the battle begins, activate the D-Link and start spamming the block button. Goofy is the only D-Link that fills when you block attacks. I should hope that I don't need to explain why that is. And with this MF's barrage of attacks, it won't be long until you can unleash the Goofy Spin finisher. Plus, if you have the aforementioned Renewal Barrier, you won't even need Cure Spells. When you see the finisher, go to town. But not too much or who use his own Renewal Barrier. Back off for a bit, then continue to wail on him. Wash, rinse, repeat, and he'll be taken down in no time. Now, the unfortunate downside to this is that because Terra doesn't have Goofy, he can't use the strategy. Ooh, that's bad. However, I have heard that you can use the Peter Pan strat. That's good. Unfortunately, halfway through the attack, he'll activate Renewal Barrier. Ooh, that's bad. But you can apparently sidestep this by quickly pausing and unpausing the game at the right time. That's good. But doing this is also incredibly likely to crash the game. Can I go now? Yes, let's move on to the Mirage Arena. Most of the battles here weren't anything special, though I was able to use Ignite and even Poison to trivialize a lot of the bosses. Also, I probably had zero business winning the Monstro fight, but I'll take it. Unfortunately, my luck ran out with the Keepers of the Arena tournament. Iron and Prisoner 3 and 4 proved to be quite a hassle to me. And the sad part is, I'm sure it wouldn't have been as bad if it weren't for the waves of enemies I had to get through to get to them. With other bosses, if I fail, I just have to try again. Here, though, failure means having to go through the entire tournament from the beginning. Which isn't difficult, just tedious. And yeah, these guys are immune to status effects, like I would have predicted. However, I did find a way to deal with them. The Command Sonic Blade. You might think these guys are too high off the ground for this move to really do anything, but nope! And better yet, with each of its five hits, the attack knocks the boss back and they can't do anything. Well, if you have four Sonic Blades in your deck and five attack haste abilities, you can treat these bastards to an endless barrage and essentially stun lock them. It is beautifully cheesy. Finally is the Armor of the Master and No Heart. Ericus here looks intimidating until you realize his main attacks have a limited reach. If you stay far enough away, but not too far to make him chase you, you can mostly deal with him with ranged attacks. My weapon of choice was Triple Fireaga. Use Fireball and only Fireball, nothing but Fireball, just Fireball, just Fireball, just fire. His other two main attacks can be deflected back at him, and his desperation move can be fairly easily dodged. Now, with no heart, sad to say, I had to use an Aqua-specific strategy to beat. At time of writing, I have not beaten him as Terror or Ben in Zero XP, and quite frankly, with the amount of work it would take to get them to that point, I don't plan to. The first phase against the wall was pretty standard, but once I got into the meat of the fight, I would down two Fabricadabra ice creams in a row, supposing he gave me room to breathe. One to activate the Spellweaver command style, and the second to instantly fill the command gauge and use the finisher. Now, theoretically, one could use the same strat with Terra and Ben via their unique command styles, but let's be real here, Spellweaver's finisher is infamously broken. So that was Birth by Sleep Zero EXP. While not easy per se, I have found it one of the easiest thus far, optional bosses notwithstanding, and would honestly recommend it as a way to dip your toes into this challenge if you're willing to engage with the command melding system.